Renee Salt was just a little girl when she arrived at Auschwitz, but she remembers everything. The journey in the packed train, the orchestra who played loudly to drown out the screams of people being murdered, the extreme violence, the awful overcrowding, and the pure fear. She never thought she'd survive, but she did. And over the last 12 years, Renee has been part of the UK March of the Living. Here's a glimpse at her incredible story from the New Take Films documentary, Why We March. Dawn was just breaking when the train slowed down and came to a stop. Immediately we heard dogs barking. They opened up the doors, they unbolted them, and when you looked outside, it seemed that an army of assessment and Gestapo awaited the train, all heavily armed and with large guard dogs. The screaming and bellowing, get off the train, get a move on, be quick. My father jumped off, I jumped after him. By the time I jumped off, I didn't see him anymore. He disappeared like into thin air. I never saw him again. All around us was electrified, illuminated fencing, and above them stood a rank of high watchtowers. It was so terribly frightening. Guards moved in, shoving us into columns. Some of them whispered, you are now here in Auschwitz-Birkenau. This is the place where people are being taken straight into the guest chambers. That was our greeting. As we were walking, we had a beautiful orchestra playing, the best musicians they had picked out from all over Europe, sitting there playing in the middle of the camp. Why they, they were playing there, I don't know till today. Some people said that they were playing so that the people in the camp shouldn't hear the screaming coming out of the guest chambers. We were taken into a very large hall, told to strip, leave our clothes on the benches. Everyone had their heads shaved. They collected any valuables that anybody had. We were pushed into a very large room, which looked like a shower room. Everyone was saying prayers, hugging, kissing one another. We thought it was our last hour. But we were the lucky ones. They still needed us for very hard work. So water came through, not gas. A young woman, a strong woman, stood outside with a whip in her hand, and she said to us, I'm very small, but I can beat you up very hard. Don't forget. And she did keep her word. We were taken into one of these huts, like this one, we were sitting half in a row against the wall on both sides of the hut, on the stone floor. Five in a row. We are sitting there. We're sitting in between each other's legs, packed like sardines. In this position, we had to sit day and night. Transports arrived to Auschwitz from all over Europe, mostly bringing with them up to 20,000 people. 60 to 80% of these people were straight into the guest chambers. After each incoming transport and each selection of the huts, you could see black smoke all over the place and I see this sickly burning smell of flesh would drift across the whole area. I never believed I'll ever come out alive of here. When we arrived, they opened up the great doors and we were pushed through. The, the scene that met us is difficult to describe. Here we saw skeletons walking. Their arms and legs were like matchsticks. The bones protruding through their ragged remains of skin and their eyes bulged out grotesquely out of their scowl-like faces. Some were dressed in rags, others were naked. While I was walking around the camp, I noticed two large hills in the distance. Not till I came near them did I realize that these hills were dead bodies piled up to heaven. There was no one to bury them. It was simply terrible. The stench that arose from the camp was simply unreal. We thought we were just pushed through the gates of hell.